level fucking two. The second you walk in the building, you're going to hear within the first 10 to 30 minutes when the cops come walking through, you're going to hear the door shake. Caminando, walking. This means the cops are coming through. Everybody's notifying everybody in the building the cops are about to walk. This is some level twos where you could shake the door like that. At this time, at this time during my term, they were sending people to Delano CCF as a level two. They were sending people to Shafter MCCF as a level two. A lot of these other yards like CMC and these other yards turned PC. Norco wasn't even good no more after a while. And fucking Chuck Walla went all bad. All these fucking yards that people fucking talk about, they say are bad now. At one time in Cali, every yard was good. Now in Cali, most yards are PC. So you have to know this. A level two will always be dorm living. You will never be in cells at a level two. Now these dorm spots, they crack the fuck off because they're so flooded. They're so motherfucking flooded, it's crazy. So the politics have to be tight. But the problem is everybody's loose. Everybody's loose with their politics. The last spot I was at, a level two, I had the place. I was the shot caller. I told everybody what we got to do. These dudes just came in from fucking, from the streets even. Some of them dropped from level threes. None of them dropped from a four to a three to the two like I did. So I was more militant. I was more about the rules. I was more about knowing that if we don't check our people, there will be a problem. Now the blacks and the others and the northerners would always trip on me and think I was, they, they got the program, but they didn't when it fit them. So they would be pissed that I would tell my people, no fucking gambling. Don't have that black fool sitting on your rack. You guys aren't touching each other's shit. You're not using their workout bag. Not with the northerners either or the others. We keep the shit fully separated because we need to not have a liability in effect. Okay? This is why. Not because I'm racist, but check out this motherfucking scenario. My boy Books, he would always, he was a quiet kid. He was a good kid. But he couldn't tell people like, no, don't sit on my rack. And he would, he would associate with blacks because we do associate. When you think we just don't talk, that's not true. We talk in passing. I have a lot of black homies from the last spots I was at that were cool as fuck. Good ass motherfuckers. Okay? And the thing is, is you live in very close quarters. So here's my rack, me and my bunkie. Here's a black and his bunkie. On the other side, here's a black and his bunkie. It's split up like that. You live very close. So the lines have to be drawn somewhere. Some places, you guys don't even use the same driveway. I use this driveway into my cell. The blacks use this driveway into their cell. That's just how it is. They would always get pissed at me when I'd say like, man, what are you doing? Like, let's not fucking cross these boundary lines. And everybody would be like, man, Wes, it's a level two, quit tripping. But they didn't really drop points. Some of them did but they didn't really fucking want to go with the politics because it was a better place to live. Level twos are less strict, but check out this scenario. This is why. So say a black comes and sits down on, on books rack and they're fucking chopping it up. They're just, they're talking. This would happen in some buildings, not mine though, because what if that motherfucker came over he had some dope in his pocket. He had some tobacco. He had something he shouldn't have, some sort of contraband, and he drops it while he's sitting there. Now the cops come in to hit the block, and they just happen to hit Books' fucking rack, and now he gets caught with some dope that wasn't his. That's going to start a fucking problem with every race because they're not going to admit it, and we're not going to say nothing. So then we got to go fucking to war, and this alleviates these fucking problems. I was, it was even to where... The day room at this certain facility was split where there's half the day room for the whites, the Southsiders and the Pisces, half the day room for the blacks, the northerners and the fucking uh, the others. And we would they would try to intermingle city. They would try to integrate sitting. And that just wasn't flying with me. All my people were sitting on one side. And in these day rooms at these small CCFs, they had different fucking they had segregated bench segregated tables we all had different tables we sit at everything is segregated by race still but at these places everyone would try 
to break the rules and bend the rules because they would say, Wes, it's not that serious. All this shit ain't that serious until shit goes down. It isn't that serious until it fucking is, okay? Until someone's shit comes up missing, until you guys are gambling and someone can't pay the debt, or until someone who's running a store fucking fronts off some shit and the other fool can't pay it. Now we have a fucking problem because it becomes a disrespect issue at that point. Even if it is small fucking beans, it's still disrespect. It's still a problem. Somebody has to take the fall. So at these level two facilities, every fucking night, you the door would shake or you'd hear walking and then all of a sudden, you'd hear a motherfucker just booking it around the day room, just taking off because he's getting caught. He has some drugs or he has his cell phone. He was up talking to his chick or something and the cops rolled in. Now this happened every fucking night. One time my fucking, uh, my homeboy Tommy Gunn from Stockton, he goes fucking jumping. He jumped the fucking stairs from the top tier to the lower tier, fucking lands at the bottom rolling and shit, gets away, slides the fucking phone to the other homeboy and gets away with it. Sometimes people get away with it. Sometimes they don't. I was talking to one of the homeboys at one of those spots the other day and he said this dumbass fool got rolled up on. One of our people gets rolled up on. He has some dope on him and the cops are running after him and, and he can't even remember what he's going to do. Swallow it or fucking toss it or whatever. So he just gets rolled because he's all high as fuck on that speed. Now, I've told this story before, but this was one of the most gruesome fucking, this was one of the most gruesome removals that turned into a stabbing that I've ever seen at a level two. We're sitting for chow, we're at fucking Delano, and the way it works is here's building five, here's building six, here's building seven. We're all waiting for chow. Now, building six had gone. I had already had word that the Pisces were going to take their fool out. They're going to take that fool out because he was fucking hitting on dope and not breaking off his people with their third. So when they went to chow, two hitters came at this fool. They came at this fool with knives. And we were all, we were all holding back because we knew it was coming. So then they were fucking going to stab this fool up. This fool had his motherfucking spork on my motherfucking life and fucking just hits this fool in his cheek, punctures his cheek twice and pops the motherfucker's eye out. And I'm sitting there. I'm on the left side of the door. My partner's on the right side of the door. My northerner partner, who I fuck with tough still this, still till this day, I talk to all the time. He's on the right side of the door. I'm on the left side of the door. And I look over at him. I say, hey, big dog, was that motherfucker's eye hanging out? Because the guy ran past us and then ran into his block, five block. He came running down the sally port at us. And we see his eye just jiggling. And the fools are still, cha the fools are chasing him with their pieces. And I'm like, motherfucker, was that fool's eye hanging out? And the fool's like, yeah, that was. And I just went straight back into it. I said, motherfucker, we got to go get this chicken on the bone, dude. Fuck this shit. But I mean, this janky ass facility was so janky that they would fucking make you give them their ID on chicken day and fucking write down that you already went through. And then they would tally up all the chickens because they were fucking feeling like we were getting over on them because some people would find a way to finagle another fucking finagle another bird on that day motherfuckers call it bird you know go get that fucking bird we white boys call it chicken on a bone blacks call it getting that bird you know that's fucking that's that prison lingo but anyways one time i'm fucking rolling through this direct chow hall and a white boy pulls me over i go what's up dog he says you west from dago and i say what's up homie yes sir what's up what's going on brother and he goes uh he goes, hey, your boy, I just left Susanville. And your boy Caps, he told me to send his love. That shit meant the fucking world to me, man. Because that's my boy still till this day. We hang out every day. It's my brother. So fucking when he sent that word, I was just like, that's fucking real. And then the homie Iceman went up there, and I sent word with him. So we were exchanging shit. Even though we talked on the phone from, block, from prison to prison, it was just cool that that shit happened like that. Small shit like that will make your day. Don't fucking mistake all these interactions you have in your life. Think about if you ever lost those people. I see so many flawed fucking communication problems. And look at this shit. Let's just skip right to the end result. I'm living. You're living. We're both alive. If you died, I'd be fucking bummed as fuck. I love you. Fuck the bullshit in between. There's too many feuds between family members, friends, all this bullshit. None of it fucking matters. When you go away for a long time, you really realize that life is so much shorter than we all fucking like to believe. Keep your fucking feelings in check. Don't engage in 
bitch ass behavior and just be a real motherfucking man with real solid principles and drop all that resentment bullshit that type of shit the negativity the resentment the pessimistic shit all that type of negative behavior is for straight bitches when we see it we know what we're looking at keep that shit moving